Alrighty, Ning Guang, the Geo Goddess. She loves to shine, she's so divine, she deserves a shrine, cause her design is so mighty fine. <laughs> hey! Anyways, before we start the video, I just want to mention that only a small percentage of you guys are actually subscribed to this channel, so make sure to press that subscribe button, cause it's free, and you can always change your mind. Okay, so story time. So I'm sure most of you know Ning Guang as one of the Liyue Qixing, and a quick recap for those who just skipped the story, Qixing is a committee of seven merchants and business leaders who govern Liyue. Their jobs exist to implement and follow policies laid out by Rex Lapis, also known as Zhong Li. Interestingly enough, Ning Guang's responsibilities as one of the Liyue Qixing is law and governance, which leads to her relationship with Beido. If you've been with the community for a bit, you might have gotten an impression on how Ning Guang and Beido are best friends together, but that's not really the case. So basically, Ning Guang's job is to put out these rules so people don't smuggle contrabands. And unfortunately for her, Beido didn't really care. She broke the rules anyways and continued to behave this way even after Ning Guang's countless attempts to implore Beido to stop by imposing heavy fines. Yet Beido just paid for those fines anyways and kept justifying herself with these excuses. In the end, Ning Guang just gave up, but she still believes Beido to be the most reliable person in the UA, as she is one of the few in the UA who values humanity before money. So they're like frenemies. Starting with her elemental abilities, elemental skill, 2FA, Ning Guang creates a big ass geo screen knocking these losers backwards. Although this jade screen allows creatures to enter, it filters enemies' attacks, preventing these scum from hurting the lady. However, J screens will sometimes deconstruct the moment you cast it because some people like cock blocking. Elemental Burst Emerald Splashy Ning Guang creates six jades and shoots them at the enemy. These jade missiles will have a homing feature, making sure that it hits the enemy. If you happen to have your jade screen out before you cast your missiles, the jade screen will also provide six extra missiles, multiplying your damage by two. Unfortunately though, the lady needs some space because if she doesn't, the jade missiles will either hit themselves through the ground or the wall, which doesn't hit the enemies and should be fixed. So you mean that if the chaos ever reached the point of no return, you would simply appear and use your divine powers to bring Lila back under control? Moving on to passive talents. Passive 1. Stamina. When Ning Guang has a star jade spinning behind her, her charge attack consumes zero stamina. Poggers. Passive 2. Geo buff. Just walk through here and you get a 12% geo damage bonus for 10 seconds. Passive 3. Metal detector. You now have a GPU for ores. Moving on to Constellations. Constellation 1, Explosive Rocks. Constellation 2, Cock Block Prevention. When the 2FA is shattered, the cooldown for your 2FA will reset. Constellation 3, 20 meter emerald splash. Constellation 4, better than crystallized. 2FA will now give 10% elemental protection for all allies. Constellation 5, stronger 2FA. Constellation 6, 7 jades for continuous no stamina usage. Now for artifacts, Ning Guang is a Geo DPS, so naturally, the primary stats for your artifacts should be attacks for sands, Geo damage bonus for goblet, and then crit rate or crit damage for circlet. Your choice for crit rate and crit damage will depend on what you need the most based on your total stats. For substats, crit rate and crit damage is obviously what you want to focus on, and then focus on attack percentage and maybe some HP and energy recharge for the shield. Now for P sets, for beginners, Berserker 2-piece and Braveheart P sets are pretty great, but personally, I think that the 
martial arts 4 piece set is your best option. For endgame, Bolide set can be pretty great for Ning Wong, raising her normal and charge attacks by 40%, which is a great boost, but the downside is that you need your shield up constantly. The troop set can be an option as well, however, the issue with this piece set is that it's an incredible pain in the butt to farm, and Ning Guang doesn't need the two piece set effect since crystallized shields are a joke when it comes to durability. If you're using burst support Ning Guang, then two piece Noblesse and two piece Archaic is a pretty great option as well. Personally, I'm going with the two piece Gladiator and the two piece Archaic set, which is consistent for my overall damage, including my burst. So choose whatever you prefer. Alright, story time too. Now it's fair to say that Ning Guang is one of the wealthiest people in Tavat, probably more wealthier than Diluc himself, yet interesting enough, she wasn't actually born into a wealthy family or anything of sorts. Ning Guang herself worked her way up from the very bottom to the very top, and due to her experience through a rough time in her life, Ning Guang is kind and friendly with the common folk. Notably, her relationship with the children of Liu Wei is quite interesting. Ning Guang gathers all of her information through the eyes and ears of children, promising the children with delicious sweets. She gathers all of her information and uses it for her advantage, so she likes to invest her time mingling with the common folk and also likes to see the children smile. Moving on to weapons, starting with 5 star weapons, Memory of Dust, incredible weapon for Ning Guang, only downside is that you need a shield to gain its full ability. Lost Prayer, yet another incredible weapon for its high crit rate and DPS abilities. Scoured Atlas, just a powerful catalyst. Moving on to 4 star weapons, Black Cliff, crit damage helps a lot but the ability is pretty limited, also you need 24 star glitters for this. Credit Card Catalyst, crit rate is amazing and ability is amazing but it takes your money. Royal, Timmy of all weapons, but it's actually pretty amazing if you have its refinement rank at 3 or up. The Wits, crit damage is amazing, the ability is amazing, except for that one random buff for Elemental Mastery, since crystallized shields have horrible endurance. Eye of Perception, pretty decent. Sacrificial, unnecessary. Favonius, unnecessary. Wind and Song, uh, unnecessary. Prototype, this can be used for heal support Ning Guang. You probably want to change your artifacts completely though to Archaic or Maidens. Mappa Mare, probably a good ability, but Ning Guang doesn't need Elemental Mastery. Dragon Spine, probably the best DPS choice for a free to play, but probably not the best 4 star weapon choice. So as most of you might have noticed, there aren't that many DPS weapon choices available for free to plays, which is a bit unfortunate, so hopefully in the future, there will be more suitable prototype weapons for Ning Wong. Now for teams, honestly anything works. She's a Geo unit, so it doesn't really matter, because if you're building a main DPS Ning Wong, you're probably just going to be auto attacking with Ning Wong most of the time. Because of this, usually you're probably going to care less about reactions in a Ning Guang team. So just grab whoever you like and fucking smash them all together and you now have a Ning Guang team. But the most efficient team choice is probably Geo Resonance because even if the Crystallized Shield sucks, it's still a shield and it still gives you those attack buffs. Personally, I just use Zhongli and Bennett in the team like any other team and then just use whatever element is necessary for the domain slash abyss I'm about to get myself into. But if you don't have these units, I know for sure that most of you have Diona because she was free recently. I would probably use a 4 piece cent Noblesse Diona and another random Geo unit, and they all work fine with Ning Guang. And then for the last spot, just fill in the blank. So how the f*** do you play Ning Guang? Well, you see, the short version is Elemental Skill, Auto Attack, and then Burst. The long version is Elemental Skill, Auto Attack, Burst, and then Auto Attack. But some tips, I guess. Number one, so you know how Ning Guang doesn't consume stamina for her charge attack, so she has those jade thingies behind her? Yeah, you don't actually need three total jades, you only need one. So you can technically do Auto Attack, charge attack, and then repeat. Unfortunately though, the game doesn't process fast enough to recognize that there's a jade spinning behind you, so personally, I just use auto attack twice and then charge attack. Number two, so Ning Guang kind of has this animation speed up for her charge attack. It usually procs often, but sometimes it doesn't, but it's not that hard to proc it at all. So if you do two auto attacks and then hold onto your charge attack right away, I think the game thinks that her charge attack is a normal attack, so they kind of speed it up, essentially increasing their DPS. You'll probably catch onto this pretty quickly if you start playing Ning Wong for a bit. Number three, always cast your jade screen before you attack, because 12% geo damage bonus might sound small to you, but it increases your damage anyway, so just cast it, and then walk back and forth a bunch of times. And please, for the love of Eula's thighs, cast your screen before you ult, you're basically doubling your damage. Please do this. If you don't, I'm going to lose my shit. So yeah, Ning Guang is a pretty great DPS if you invest in her right. If you despise stamina, I would highly recommend Ning Guang, because she will definitely won't have an issue with that. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like and subscribe. I also stream on Twitch on Wednesday, Friday, and weekends, so come by if you'd like. We also have a Discord server which is linked in the description below, but other than that, bye bye